So you have a great day of photography. You get back home and you realize that the bird looks a lot farther away than you thought. Or maybe this was as close as you could get to him. Now it's time to do what I call creative cropping. Make sure that you're in the develop module up here at the top. Click on develop. Okay. The best view of this shot is going to be vertical. So I've decided to make this a vertical image. You click over here on the crop overlay tool. Now you'll see this grid up here, which is divided up into thirds. Make sure that the aspect is selected and the crop, uh, the crop frame tool is selected to aspect. Come over here and start drawing a vertical box. Okay, get that about to where you want it. Um, this will probably even look better as an eight by 10. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to select under this drop down as shot, I'm gonna select eight by 10. I'm gonna bring that up. I'm gonna bring it over a little bit more toward this intersection here. His head is coming down into the frame, looking down toward the left bottom. I've got plenty of negative space here. I like this crop. I'm gonna hit the return key or the enter key. And now I have a much better crop. This is something I can sell. This is something that has a lot more impact. And this is a perfect example of what I do every day by creative cropping. Okay, so you get back, you got a great photograph, but you realize that the exposure is not quite where you want it. It's not terrible, but it's not quite how you want it. Or maybe you want it to underexpose slightly because you were dealing with highlights. How do we recover that? How do we deal with that in Lightroom Classic? First of all, if you're in library, cl click on the develop module up here at the top. Okay, so the way I handle exposure is I come right down this panel right here. Okay, the first thing I need to do is down here on exposure. I'm gonna bring this up to where it looks pretty good. The histogram is showing the green background here. You can see the green, it's back here. And that's pretty much where I want it. The highlights here are a little bit overexposed. You can see those far over here to the right and the flower has got some uh, overexposure. But we can deal with all this with simple brushes and so forth. But what I'm trying to do here is just show you how to get the best initial exposure. So come over here. Now that we've set this to a plus 60 for this image, that's a little bit over a half a stop of exposure. I want to come down here to the whites. See the whites and the blacks over here in the right in this panel? I want to hold the Alt key down, hover over the blacks, and while I have the Alt key held down, click on the arrow Notice that I can now see the blacks. If I go to the left, I have all blacks, way too much black. If I go to the right, I have no blacks. I want to get this so the blacks are just showing. See how I got the blacks there? Now if I just bring it to the right, bring it to the right, and now they're gone. My black point is set. Now I wanna come back to the whites and do the same thing. Hold down the Alt key click on the little arrow thing right here on the slider control. Now I get the same black screen. And if I go to the right, all my weights blow out. If I go to the left, I have no weights. So what I wanna do, I wanna bring this up until I just see the weights and then bring it back just a little bit. Now my white point is set. Notice how much more balanced the image looks now. The, the weights are, are in control. The exposure is proper. I've still got maybe a little overexposure here up in the flower, but generally speaking, this is a properly exposed photograph. The background is properly exposed. The hummingbird is properly exposed and the flower is properly exposed. 
Well, you say, Matt, why isn't this blue channel and the green channel up here in the middle where it should be? Because all images are different. That's a good starting place. Yes, that is a proper exposure in the middle, but you have different tones in the background. You have different lighting conditions going on here. You have different subjects. They're all reflecting light differently. This flower is reflecting light heavily. And so you can't always rely just on the histogram. You have to rely on other things like setting your white and black point, and then just getting a general feel with your exposure slider to get the right exposure. Okay, then this next issue is a common problem. It's a common problem with cameras where the white balance is set to auto. Here we have this beautiful Falcon um, and he is, it's a nice crop. It looks good, but the white balance is way off. We've got too much blue. We've got too much, even a little bit of green in here. And this is a common problem with Sony cameras, but it's also can be other camera systems as well. <clears throat> you can see here that in fact, as I go into the develop module again, you can see over here in my panel, I've got temp and tint. That is where I do a custom white balance change. And I don't mess around with this eyedropper, you know, and, and clicking on a weight. You just, you don't know. You just, you just don't know. You know what the bird looks like. You were there, you saw it, you know what it's supposed to look like. Okay. There's just far too much blue in here and this, and far too much, um, green. And this is from years and years of experience. Generally speaking, auto white balance almost always needs more yellow. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the yellow temp and I'm going to watch that image carefully. Okay. That's too much yellow. All right. You see that I'm going to bring it back, bring it back, bring it back right about there for now. I may change that in a minute. Now I want to come down here because I've got too much green in this image. So I want to come down here and on my tint, the tint handles the green, the green. So you got green to the left magenta to the right opposite colors just like on the temp we've got blue to the left yellow to the right opposite colors i'm going to hold down on the slider i'm going to move it to the right and look too much magenta okay let's move it back Ooh, i kind of like that Ooh, see how the green move it to the left look at all that green so bring it back to center and just keep going and that's too much. I like it right there, right there, plus 17 on the magenta. Um, there are other things you can do here. You can actually uh, brush in the uh, temperatures, which is nice. Um, sometimes you want to add, sometimes you'll see a spot. If you're in the forest, deep forest, you might see where this is uh, green. You know, the shadow is green and you want to make that not look green you can actually brush that in that's for a whole nother uh, video but anyway that's generally how you improve your weight balance um, there's a lot of scenarios when you're in the shade and so forth where auto weight balance just doesn't work okay this next issue is how to balance the, the background and the foreground exposure. This is a great new tool that's available now in the latest versions of Lightroom. And this is Lightroom Classic. If I go up here, let's look at what version we're on now. This is Lightroom Classic 12.4. Okay, so I got this nice shot here in Florida of a red-shouldered hawk. And it's, it's a little underexposed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to change the exposure. I've already brought the highlights back here to minus a hundred because the weight was all blown out. If I take it back to where it was, see how that weight, uh, all that weight is blown out right there. So this is actually more of a proper exposure overall, but you've got all this weight, a common problem with birds, especially birds of prey. What we're going to do is just take the highlights, take it all the way back to minus 100, 
get rid of all that bright white. Okay. And then just like before, I'm going to raise my exposure to where it looks proper to me. So probably right around there. Okay. And, and you say, Matt, but what? It's all underexposed up in here. Look at the histogram again. Histograms lie, lie, lie. Trust me. It's getting all this back here. It's getting this. It's getting this in the corner. It's getting all that green. See all that green? That's all approaching uh, the correct exposure, right? But not everything is the correct exposure. The background is darker. So now we come down here. We set our white point like we did before. We hold down the Alt key. Left click on the arrow on the white slider and we're going to increase that until we see white dots see the white dots and then bring it back till they did just disappear boom go to the black hold down the alt key do the same thing take the blacks back okay there's the blacks now bring them forward bring them to the right bring them to the right until they disappear slightly boom there's your black point now the meat of this is we've got this background here that's kind of cluttered. I don't like that background. I want to de-emphasize the background and emphasize the foreground. So I'm going to go up here under my masking tool and we have so many options now with the new masks. I'm going to select the background. Okay, now notice how all that background is selected just about perfectly. We could change it a little bit here. It's got some of the bird's tail. We could remove some of this. I could I could do that easily by just clicking the uh, subtract from mask up here button. And then I could come in here and go to brush. And just get rid of that so that it's now part of the scene. Part of the subject. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. Now go over here to the mask one, see mask one up here? That's the mask we're currently working on. Watch how I do this now. Bring the exposure slider back. Watch the background get dark. I can bring this thing back to black. Look at that, isn't that crazy? Um, all with just a slider. So let's bring that back to a more natural look. And look at this. I can do minus one stop on this. And now the background can still be seen. We, we can still see that it's palm trees and stuff back there. And now the subject is popping. And now we, we have an exposure. This is what I call balancing the exposure. You had the right exposure to start with, but your background and foreground were not the right exposure really to emphasize your subject. And that's what we're doing here. What a difference in this image already. So here's what it looked like before, right? And there's what it looks like afterward. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Before, after, before, after. Okay, so we're back here and now we've got this snow goose. I'm um, not going to worry about exposure with this. I'm just going to leave it where it's at. But we're interested in getting rid of the noise in the background only. The foreground has no noise. The bird is, is, is looking good. Some noise there, but not much. Needs a little sharpening on the eye. Uh, but this background has quite a bit of noise. Taken with a Sony A1 at uh, ISO 1250. But the reason there's so much noise because that's all shadow back there. So how do we get rid of that noise without using something like um, Sharpen AI or any other Topaz product or something like that? Go to the develop module. We're gonna go in here to the masking tool, a real game changer. Um, you can see I've already got a mask here I created for, for the subject, but now I'm gonna create one for the background, select background. I just cl I just click the plus button and then select background. Now I have the background highlighted. Couple things you can do here. One of the things I like to do is 
I like to come in here and first denoise it, right? So let's look at see what that did. Okay, that helped, but still seeing some noise there. The next thing you can do, you don't want to go crazy with the denoise. I mean, you can. You can rip it all the way to the right. Um, the problem, though, you may start seeing some issues where it started attacking the subject a little bit here and blurred some things. But even when I went all the way to the right, it didn't get rid of the clumpiness of the noise. It just killed the noise, which is an issue I hate with, uh, with Lightroom. Now, the next thing I do as I come in here to clarity and I pull the clarity to the left. Now you're going to get some nice looks. There you go. Completely noise free now in the background. The clumpiness is going away. You can, you can try that to varying degrees, but that is probably the simplest way to get rid of moderate noise. Um, you know, certainly there are other ways, you know, there's AI denoise now. Um, in Lightroom, but this is still a way I like to do it. I think it's a simple way to do it. I'm also a big fan of Denoise AI by Topaz Labs. Uh, you can click in the uh, comment section below and there or in the description below and you will have a link where you can go out there and purchase it. I highly recommend it, but if you don't have it, this technique will work every time. Hey, thanks for watching this video. You know, I really appreciate everyone out there actually watching all my videos and making the comments that you do. I wouldn't do this if it wasn't for that. And I just wanted to let you know that if you really would like to help support me, there's a couple ways that you can do it. One, it costs absolutely nothing. You can click like and subscribe down below. I know you hear that all the time, but it really does help uh, us creators out a lot and we could really use it. The other way, of course, is you can go out to my website. I sell merchandise out there for Matt Kuda Nature Photography. I sell all my images out there and uh, that would help me out a great deal. Now back to the video. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick five tips on how to get better results in Lightroom.